Hello, it's been a couple of days since I posted anything. I apologize to the couple of people that watch my shit. Um, uh, it's a, you know, it's a few considerations. I, this is um, almost the end of my semester. I mean, technically the semester is over, but I do have one more paper to finish, which I'll plan on turning in today. Also, it's getting warmer and I can't really film while the AC is on because, well, you know, it's loud. It's super, super loud. But anyway, uh, I'm going back to my uh, regular schedule program. Hopefully, um, hopefully I can get back to making a video. Uh, well, at least posting a video. That I do have some stuff in the back order, like stuff I've uploaded. But then I, probably a lot of them I will end up deleting because the audio is bad and refilming them. Or we'll see. But today I'm going back to um, looking at different brands, and this will be the part two of my scheduled four-parter. Uh, brand comparison today I'm going to be talking about basic models basic toy models now um, this is going to be a bit hard to define because well mm, there's a bit of a cutoff between what a basic model is and a premium model the easiest thing to think about is probably price but then like you have models that are pretty expensive like a Barago and a um, this is a Atomica um, Originally, they're sold for um, probably a bit less than what you can get in the U.S. But anyway, like Barago, even in store, will be sold for five dollars, and um, even a basic Tomica, if you're getting in the United States, will probably be up to like ten dollars. So they'll be much cheaper if you live in Japan or elsewhere in Asia. And as you can see right here, um, there's a couple more out to the side, but you can see this is a Tomica Premium, what they call a Premium, and a Hot Wheels. Uh, ID both are a lot better than their um, basic models. You can think about it as premium, but I don't. I, I it's it's really hard to talk about. Like it's easy to think about like premium models, right? This is Atomic Limited Vintage, and well, it has so many attributes for it to be called a premium model. It's expensive. Even in Japan, this thing will be in the equivalent of twenty three dollars. It's got suspension. It's proper True 164. It's got rubber tires. It's got metal body, metal base. It's got hyper realistic details. Um, but then, like you get to the in between. Well, for instance, one of the criteria was like rubber tires. But then, not every vehicle without a rubber tire considered premium. I uh, consider basic. For instance, this uh, Johnny Lightning. Uh, it does have plastic wheels. But then, like everything else, just makes it like so much premium. This is obviously designed to be a collector's item. Uh, metal bases, not necessarily. This one I got from Grainy & Co. from all the way from Taiwan. It's got plastic base, but it's got rubber tires. It's got super, so detailed. It's got engine detail. So uh, it's, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard to uh, draw the line between a basic model and premium models. But I've done, I think, the best I could. And most, more than anything else, is like the intention. Did the uh, makers of this product design it to be a toy to be played with? Or did the, they design for these things to be collected. Now that's not going to be easy to decipher. I'm not a um, psychologist, but hopefully I've done a good enough job. But you know, if you disagree with me, oh well, I guess. So uh, obviously the easiest one to think about is Hot Wheels. And price-wise, it's a very easy one because it's only a dollar. Usually you might, if you live elsewhere in the world, it might be a little bit more expensive. But Hot Wheels is, if you want to build up a collection cheaply and quickly, Hot Wheels will be the way to go. I think the uh, draw more than anything else is a variety of models they offer. You can get like a Lamborghini, you can get a Ford, you can get stuff from like the 1930s, you can get stuff from like 2020. So, um, and if you want, for instance, the uh, Scooby-Doo Mystery Machine, you can get it. If you want the uh, Time Machine from Back to the Future, you can get it. If you want a car that's based on a piranha, you can get it. There are just so many to choose from. Now, these things being $1 have a problem, which is, um, well, they don't have the best of details. I mean, you can see the casting of details is pretty good, but you see print-wise, there's one side. There's the top. I mean, it looks like the front, but in terms of printing, this is the top. And you see um, another side. There's three sides. The most Hot Wheels will do is every uh, three sides. For instance, you can see there's no backlights. Um, which is kind of a bummer, but then like I understand why they wouldn't do it just to keep the cost low But this is why Hot Wheels is a dollar. This is why it's a basic model. It's designed to be a toy, right? 
Um, and another issue I have with Hot Wheels is so the, although they're casting, the metal and plastic parts are usually okay. The printing is not always consistent. I have so many models that I just had to leave out of my collection just because how badly the prints came out. Also, on the proportions are not always right. This Gallardo is pretty good, but there are some other cars with like weird proportions. I don't know, like I think Hot Wheels. I don't think it's a matter of abilities. Like they want to um, kind of change it up a little bit to make them more cool and stuff. I think kids will appreciate it, but collectors probably usually not. Also, a lot of Hot Wheels vehicles have um, oversized back wheels that just make them look really weird. Um, so they're really good toys. I think they usually have a great price for a dollar. Um, not the best in terms of collectability. Now this is Hot Wheels sibling. This is Matchbox. Matchbox started as like Lesney, a uh, British company, but now um, it's also owned by Mattel. You can see they also have the same three side thing. This is another Gallardo police car. Also got three sides, top and the two sides. Uh, as a result, you also see that I also don't have any backlight printing. But one of the things you probably began to see, these are not the same version, obviously, not the same Gallardo. That's why this one doesn't have a back spoiler. But you do see that Matchbox have a little bit more detail. You can see that they actually have um, uh, side mirrors, which most Hot Wheels vehicles don't have because while it's going to interfere with them going down the tracks, it's, uh, especially through bo boosters, it's n not that good for rolling down the tracks. Matchbox, in comparison, they have better proportions. They're usually, um, they usually don't have oversized back wheels. They have a bit more details. They're a bit more f collector friendly. Uh, I know I'm showing Lamborghini right now, but that's not really like the best um, Matchbox offers. What Matchbox does better than it, probably anything else at this price range is realistic, uh, like everyday working vehicles. For instance, this uh, this is a Freightliner truck of uh, some sort. Uh, the thing is, a lot of, not all of them, I would love it if all of them have it, but a lot of Matchbox models have the scale on the bottom of the car and which tells you exactly what scale it is and I think for a toy model that's very much appreciated for instance you can see under the uh, on the other side of this um, Freightliner it's here somewhere you see it right next to the elephant that denotes it as being made in Thailand you see the 164 yeah this thing is proper 164 and you can know that immediately without looking it up Next up, I think these things are probably cheaper than Hot Wheels and Matchbox. I don't know. I don't see them in stores really. This is a the lighting's a bit weird. I think I'm gonna yeah, just a little. So keep going way too fast. Uh, this is a Maisto. Maisto is owned by the Mage Home Group, which is based in Hong Kong. These things are usually, uh, I would say, a little less than Matchbox and Hot Wheels. You can see the wheels look really weird, and they look especially weird if you actually look at like the width. They're so thin, and they don't really, like, they don't fit the wheel wells at all. Now, I think this is a particularly bad model, although this is the only uh, basic uh, Maisto I have. And also look at how slanted the whole thing is. It's not that good. I have to say I, I don't like being negative but this is one I, brand I don't really care about at least they're basic models the premium models are nice but well let me when I talk about not true 164 premium models I'll get to them one thing I appreciate though is how good their print is like see the uh, h2 you see over here or like the black paints like the uh, parallel lines they get it really nicely I think this is actually better paint than Hot Wheels usually have and see the back yeah Everything that needs to be painted is really good, but the whole, the casting as a whole, not a big fan. Now, uh, the Meichon Group also owns Barago, which started as Italian, but then was bought out by uh, Meichon. You can s immediately see how much, how much nicer this is. For instance, this actually has an interior, um, and you can see the engine details on the back side. Now, Meichon Group holds the uh, exclusive licensing for Ferrari, although they sub-licensed it to a Takara Tomy, which makes Tommy Cup which I'll get to in a second. You can see full details, even the back, the uh, exhaust pipes are painted. The wheels are wonky, they're not super nice. I mean, they're nice, they're high quality, but then they, uh, uh, how should I put it? They just look a bit toilish. They're not uh, realistic. And these things are not cheap. These things are like $5 sold in the United States, although maybe it's cheaper elsewhere, I'm not quite sure. Also, these things are super big. 
Um, since I'm going to be talking about Atomica in a second anyway, this is the Atomica version of the uh, LaFerrari, although it's obvious you can see it's the uh, Aperta, it's the uh, convertible version, and this thing is already 162, meaning it's ever so slightly larger than a 164, but you can see how much bigger the Barago version is. I think it's like 160 and probably honestly even a bit larger. Really nice, but they're not. They're going to look out of place with your like Hot Wheels collection or your true 164 collection. Since we're on the topic, Tomiko, a uh, Japanese company, Takara Tomi. And in my opinion, this is like probably the nicest brand for um, toy models. Now, they're obviously going to be a lot more expensive, but you can see where the money is going to. Like the uh, headlights are actual plastic inserts. The backlights are probably going to be harder to see because it's red on red, but the backlights are also plastic inserts. Like you, even the tiniest details are painted. It's painted. They don't have like the four, uh, the three side rules as Hot Wheels does. And you can see like even a bit more paint in the, on the back. It's overall, it's just super nice. And all of them, well, not all of them. Depending on the model, they but uh, most of them, if not uh, a lot of them, if not most of them, have suspension and like really really nice suspension too. Um, the only complaint complaint that people might have will be um, the wheels being super toyish and basically a basic Tomica only has mm, this size style of wheels. Uh, but I mean, compared to with everything like Tomica does right, I I think it's completely fine. Like just all the casting is just so good, and you could just wheel swap is like the easiest thing you can do to customize the model anyway. Yeah, really, 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 really good. I definitely think it's like the best. Um, another one I think this is American company. This is where I start getting to like the more niche stuff. Um, this is a Motor Max. You can see it's. Um, I mean, I bought it because it's a Honda, but similar to Barago, it's really oversized, larger than one sixty four, and it's. I think it might be larger than one sixty. Nice wheels, but. You can see how much they're uh, protruding from the wheel wells. This is as far as I can push them, so this looks really weird. But you can see all around painting, nice details, that kind of stuff. If you uh, swap the wheels out and I don't know, shrink it down, it might look really good. It's, it's all right, it's cool. So this is Motor Max. And some of the other ones that I struggle with if I wanted to put them in uh, premiums or uh, basics, but the, the easiest one to put in basic is this. Um, Auto World. Now, Auto World has a premium range, which is why it's so easy. I'll obviously, I can just throw it here in the basic range, but it's still really, really good. You see all around details, um, even the tiniest stuff on the sides, really good. The headlights is a problem, which is something I have I, I have against a lot of Auto World, even in their premium models. It's just painted, um, really flat one color. Um, very few of them have plastic inserts for headlights, which is, and you can see on this mod, it looks really weird. Honestly, like it brings back the whole thing. And this is a true 164, which is just weird because, well, uh, toy models are designed to play, right? No one is gonna, no kid is gonna get cut. Oh, look, this is a true 164. Um, so I think it's a bit weird. The wheels are plastic, but you can see it's really, really nice. And the one thing I, don't really like is how you can see there's kind of a, a protrusion here. It's designed so uh, there's a smaller surface uh, to uh, roll on, which means it's faster. I've tested this thing is pretty fast. I don't know if it's like fast enough how this or not, but it's really nice. But I think these things are sold for three dollars, and I, I, it's, I mean, honestly, it's really nice. Look at how nice the paint is and everything, how shiny it is. Eh, I, I feel like might as well just get the uh, premium, um, proper premium Auto World stuff, which is much, which is like pretty good, much better. Although, again, I'll get to that when I talk about True 164 premium models. Next up is a um, European company. I'm pretty sure it's French. It's uh, Major Red, or as you would say, I think in Europe, like Majoret or Majoretta. Uh, yeah, sorry, probably completely butchered it. This is what's called a, a major rep premium, so I would assume they have a basic range as well, but I also put it under this toy line because, well, stuff is opening parts. I, I think this is still like kind of designed for toy, uh, for kids as a toy, but it's really nice. You can see all around prints. The opening parts are really good, honestly, um, better than Matchbox. Oh, by the way, Matchbox also has a $2, what they call the basic plus moving parts. 
I don't have them specifically, but having experience with some Matchbox, uh, premium Matchbox models with opening parts, I would say this is much better. The Major Red is much better. They also have suspension, but it's not as nice as Atomica models. These are super nice, but they're not really accessible in the United States, which is probably the biggest problem. So if you want to get them online, you can you probably have to shell out about ten dollars to have them shipped to you, which is a shame. I think it's nice to have one model in my collection, but I wouldn't really bother getting more unless and I get to like Europe and get them there for a lot cheap because they're really nice if you want to get more of them even their basic models they just look really nice but the, the price I can't justify it in the United States at the very least next up is another model that called themselves premium this is a Atomica premium and it's super nice this is the one out of every single model this is the one I thought about like uh, do I really want to put it in basic line in a toy line but I think yes because um a lot of these Tomica Premium models, first of all, you can just see how nicely detailed they are, like all the detailed prints and the um, all of the writing, it's perfect. You're not going to get that kind of um, quality control from a Hot Wheels model that, not from a, like a basic Hot Wheels model, that's for sure. Hot Wheels Premiums are usually really, really good though. Um, it still has plastic wheels, but then you can see uh, it's much more detailed, it's not the boring toy-like basic models they have. So. Yeah, it's really good, but it's, it was a huge struggle. But then I, I, I eventually decided to put it like, oh, this is like the, this is kind of the cutoff line for me. Like anything that's more premium than this, will, I would consider it to be like a prominent, proper premium. But I feel like if I just put this model in like the premium video, it's not gonna get the love it deserves. And it's amazing like look at the interior details the orange chair and everything it's a right hand drive this thing is just a beauty honestly and another line that's a uh, struggle made me struggle a little bit. oh by the way atomica premium will be roughly around ten dollars um well fifteen dollars i guess in the united states atomica basic probably cost you ten dollars this is how it was id these things are uh, sold for like seven dollars, although they're gonna the price is gonna drop to around five later this year. Excuse me. Now you can see also has like the uh, overall really nice uh, details on every single side, nice prints. Uh, but I chose it. Also got like an awesome reflective paint that made me change my lighting because otherwise you wouldn't see a thing. Like it's so reflective. Uh, I think this might be. I think this is probably the best lighting condition. It's really nice. I love the, those models. So I think <sighs> for me, they're not worth seven dollars because the biggest draw of these models is the, the fact there is a chip on the underside. You can see like so. There's a chip here. Oh, whoopsie doops. Ah, that's fine. Um, there's a chip so you can scan it uh, with your phone or you can buy like the $30 portal and if you use the portal or the $130 ID track you can you can track your uh, um, sorry you can track the performance of your vehicles how fast they go how much time they spend running and all that kind of stuff I think uh, so it's a really cool toy but on the other hand it's seven dollars for a car like 30 for the portal and a hundred something for the track how many kids are actually gonna be able to afford this and how many I, 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 will, I would imagine most of those will be sold to like adult collectors but I'm not I don't know I like these models I I think at five dollars will be a much easier price to accept more than anything else I just like that they have like premium detail and like prints on every side if needed like I love this Jaguar it's really really nice but then the price is pretty much a premium price but it's still obviously the intention is that it's designed as a toy right so which is why I put it here really good yeah I think more geared towards collectors and kids probably um and I do have a few other brands I want to talk about stuff that's a bit more niche uh, first of all is Welly. I think it's a Chinese company. Their models are super nice, but they mod they uh, market them as 160. I think they're roughly around 160 if not larger. So this will fit better with your like Barago models or Motor Max models. They're pretty nicely detailed. Uh, but I don't think there's anything to write home about necessarily. Um, plastic wheels, although you can see um, 
Uh, the wheels are pretty nicely detailed. Looks really good. So you have the side mirrors. It's it's nicely detailed, but again, will look out of place next to your Hot Wheels and your Matchboxes and your True 164 models. And this one is Dara. I think another Chinese company. They mostly do like model airplanes and stuff, but they do have a few. 164 models, which is going to be my biggest complaint because they're really nice again uh, licensed NYPD deco really cool like all around full detail You can get a five pack for ten dollars on Amazon with free shipping So uh, you could think about them as two dollars a piece although I would assume it's going to be cheaper if you get them in China or elsewhere <clears throat> Like in Asia the only thing I'm not the biggest fan of them is um Again the headlights just too flat one color it makes it look um, 2d um, uh, but this is a, um, Ford, ooh, Crown Vic, and you can put it next to a Matchbox model. Um, uh, yeah, I think the Daryl one is better. I like, I love Matchbox. I like Matchbox more than I do Hot Wheels, but I think the Daryl one is better. And also, like, the print quality, you can see, like, the quality control is very nice. You're not going to get this sort of quality control or this kind of detail print on a Hot Wheels model for one dollar. I can tell you that for sure. Uh, the biggest problem though with Daron is, I like I said, they don't have a lot of models and a few of their models are actually unlicensed, I think. Um, the underside of the Crown Vic tells you it's a Crown Vic, but this one doesn't have any uh, like model associated with it and I mean it's realistic. It's a realistic model, it's just unlicensed. So. Uh, and I don't like the the pack doesn't tell you exactly what it has. So uh, unless you know exactly every car ever, and you realize this is not one of them, I think it's hard. You just don't know if you're getting an unlicensed model or not. So I think that's kind of a bummer. Also, they just don't have that many models in this scale. And finally, last but not least, this is um. Summer. Summer is a brand that I've talked about a little in the past. I think it's really cute. They uh, it, it it used to be a company based in Hong Kong, Hong Kong. Now I don't think it exists anymore. Uh, they do have more contemporary, more modern vehicles, but I think those ones are really bland. Might as well buy a Hot Wheels or a Matchbox instead. But this these stuff, these are uh, more vintage vehicles. I think this is some kind of old American car. I don't remember. Uh, it's definitely American. I know that for sure. Like early twentieth century, like nineteen hundreds, nineteen tens, that kind of stuff. It's nicely detailed. It's really cool. These things are not expensive. Uh, from what I've heard, they're not. Also, they're also not super sturdy, but they're really cool to have a few in my collection. I feel like now there's a there's a few other companies I would like to see. RMZ City is a Chinese brand. I'm curious about them. They have a like a basic range as well as the quote unquote premium range. Although I will probably put that in. I, I actually I don't know. I don't know enough about them. I would like to. Uh, Sample some Siku, uh, also another um, very famous European brand. I've seen a lot of stuff from them. They look really good, but I just can't get them. They're going to be super expensive in the United States and not really accessible whatsoever. But these are pretty much the basic models. Uh, thank you for watching, and in the next episode, I'll mostly be talking about the not true 164 premiums, what I call the awkward premiums in this range. Really nice stuff, but then like if they're not to scale, it uh, kind of takes away their um, appeal to me personally, at least you might disagree. But uh, I hope you enjoy this video and see you in the next one. Bye bye.